You're listening to Harry Boris on Art and Artists. And this is WFMT in Chicago at 98.7 FM. And now back to Harry Boris. Mary Ryan, an exhibition of uh, 20 uh, watercolor airbrushes uh, at the Washington National Bank of Chicago, 2525 North Kedzie Boulevard. It's in the Logan Square area. Get to it. I've talked about the issues, but now the miracle. And this is it. The balance of feeling and of thought and of technique. How long has it been since you've run into pieces that have equal amounts, and they're s superb in all areas, of technique and of feeling and of thought that are thought out, that are, that are not slap-dash, cheap, jack, passion, can't go at it, that are not thoughts that are single monolithic ideas that come out and hit you like a sledgehammer so you cannot miss that the work of art that is painted is done in neon eternity that says, ah, this is about thought. And then how much of the evasion of technique, the clumsiness of technique have you seen? Well, what about going to a show where all are powerful and all are equally functioning and balanced in the piece? She, they have great depth and they are all deeply personal. Now, talk about three pieces on the show. Three of them that are, to me, masterpieces. I'd like to talk about more of them. One I am remembering, the other two I have pictures of. First of all, for the one I remember, it's called a delicate balance. It shows a woman confronting herself. Their profile, one woman on the right, one woman on the left. The woman on the left is in a kind of a bridal veil, a diaphanous veil. You can see her face. It is what you come to feel as kind of Mary Ryan's profile, but not really. It's a self, a permutation of self. It is a young, beautiful, marketable human face. There it is in its veil. And it looks out of eyes of concession, its hair well done, its body as well proportioned as the other body that it faces, beautifully proportioned body, trust in the formal garments of the ritual of marriage and of role and of womanhood. It is quiet and it is beautiful and it is easily, easily understood. It is not with a, with a sledge that one is hit over the head, that this woman is playing the rifly role and the marriage and this is tragic. No, it is a possibility. It is an alternative of life. And you see it there, and were it taken alone, it would be like one of those wonderful little Renaissance profiles. But facing this one side of the woman's persona is the other. And it is the same face and the same woman, only the hair, not exaggeratedly, is short open, windblown. Her body is free. If I remember correctly, it is not important, but if I remember correctly, she is nearly naked. She stands there looking, her eyes slightly brighter, a little bit of moisture on the lip, a little bit more passion. And then as you look down, you see that she is a centaur or a centauress. There is just the vaguest suggestion of the curve of the body and the brownness of the horse or the mare's frame as it comes out and goes out of the bottom of the picture. And here you see the woman, the two possibilities either side in this wonderfully executed, beautifully thought. Who dreams of who? Does the centaur woman dream of being married and having the little suburban home? Does the little suburban woman dream of being free in the fields with centaurs to romp in Arcadian endlessness? Nobody knows, and she doesn't make the point. It is as it is in us, in our minds, both sides possible, both sides wanted, dreamed of, both roles living in us simultaneously. 
and we vacillate like the deadbeat escapement of a watch back and forth between the two. That's one of them. It's a great piece. I'm sorry, it cost $550 and it was sold. A lot of the pieces have been sold in the show, but there are a lot left. By the way, they're not very expensive, and they're very, very great. Another painting by Mary Ryan, and now kind of rumble around, get out a piece of paper. You've got to see the show. Another one is called 1999. Woman, profile, sits at a table, wooden table, coffee in front of her, a spoon, her face is resting against her folded hands. She sits upright. She has short black hair. It comes down her neck. Her eyes are a little dark, half open. She is reflective. There is behind her the suggestion of a pool, a hot tub, a place, a something like that. The water ripples on. The, it's more than a suggestion. It's quite there. The water ripples and reflects on the surface, a beautifully painted area, by the way. In the table, one of the drawers of the table is open, and there is a noisemaker and a little bit of beautifully con painted confetti uh, uh, coming out of it, and then those things that you blow through and that unwind, uh, and all of the party symbols. But this is not after the party, or maybe it is, but it's away in the drawer. The party has been put away. Everything else is clean. And there is a chair on the other side of the table. And on the top of that chair, that wooden chair at the side of this pool-like structure, where the woman sits in, in uh, this, this young and frail and usable woman, sits in jeans and, uh, and just a very, very casual, almost tank top, a man's hand holds the chair, a very large hand, its nails finished. It is an older hand, a hand considerably older than the woman. This is about use. A hand older than a woman grasps the chair, either turning it away to depart or turning it in to sit down. As you become aware of that, you feel her vulnerability in 19. Maybe the same story in 1999. The same use, this strange, frail, little, reasonable, all-seeing, all-understanding creature that confronts the formal suit and the cuff underneath it and the large hand with finished nails that looks to me and speaks to me of use. It may or may not to you. It is a masterful painting. And then finally, the one that killed me and the one that I just couldn't resist in any way is a painting called Blind Date. Young woman sits. Uh, these three happen to be profiles. She, they're painted in all directions and, and everything. And she sits profile on the bed, a nubile young woman. She's in her slip. Her body is full, is beautiful, is richly turned. Her hair is opulent, it cascades down her back in controlled, heavy brass ringlets. She is sitting on the edge of a brass bed, when there's some wonderful reflections going on in the bed, by the way. And there she is, in the slip, on the blind date, her hands more or less folded again, one on, on the top of her leg and the other hand over it. And there cometh the blind date. And what is the blind date but a gentleman with his clothes off, leading into the picture a little bit of hair on the chest, his finger underneath her, her chin, uh, as, his, uh, as if chucking it or as if examining it or af as if touching it, with the other hand lower down beginning to reach to touch the leg. And over his head, this creature that comes in is a paper bag, and this is the blind date in the paper bag, but the paper bag itself has a, what you think of at first as a face cut in it. And you look at it, and there are the eyes and the mouth, but what are the eyes and the mouth? The eyes and the mouth become windows and an arched doorway, and it becomes the promise of home and possibility and life and future and threat all at the same time. 
All of this is played off, incidentally, against a background with palm trees and palm leaves and yucca of one sort or another growing out so it has its romantic wallpaper scrim behind. The painting is terrible in terms of the vulnerability, in terms of her questioning need, in ten terms of her resolution, in terms of the use that she is going to undergo, in terms of her hope, in terms of her dreams, her deferments, and him, either as the enemy or as the promise. Doesn't make a lot of difference. It is a grid for thought. Three pieces by Mary Ryan. In all of them, everything is perfectly balanced, perfectly done, feeling and thought and technique. No excess one way or another. There are very few great exhibitions that come around. I don't mean great in the sense of a Max Beckmann retrospective. I mean great in terms of promise, in terms of hope, and in terms of what I've described as that ultimate balance. I don't see it. I see hundreds of shows and go all around to see them and you never see it. And here it is. And Mary Ryan's got it. So you must go. If for no other reason but to see these three pieces and about ten other in the show that are wonderful, magnificent, works of art. So at the Washington National Bank of Chicago, paintings by Mary Ryan, it's 2525 North Kedzie Boulevard, and it's down the 15th of this month. When you go, see if you can get them to extend it. It's a great exhibition, Mary Ryan.